Are your people struggling to get control of email? Is too much low-value email keeping your team from reaching its fullest potential? Are you concerned about inappropriate messages that could trigger personal issues or legal action? Mike Song is one of the world's leading email efficiency and etiquette experts and co-author of the best-selling email efficiency book, The Hamster Revolution, How to Manage Your Email Before It Manages You. His email insights have helped millions of professionals improve job performance and work-life balance. A dynamic presenter and highly sought-after commentator, Mike has appeared on CNN, Good Morning America, and NPR, while also providing interviews for USA Today, The Wall Street Journal, and The New York Times. He loves to share the often surprising findings of his original research on email. To date, Mike has collected and analyzed over 20,000 surveys from professionals around the world. The Hamster Revolution has been translated into 10 languages and is now in its fifth printing. It's the story of Harold, a professional so overwhelmed by email, he feels like a hamster on a wheel. Readers laugh and learn as Harold reclaims his life and reaches his fullest potential. Mike's fun, interactive presentations help participants save time, up to 11 days a year, while learning to communicate more effectively. When email is clear, concise, and actionable, everyone accomplishes more with a lot less stress. Every seminar can be customized to meet the client's needs. That's why over 10% of all Fortune 500 companies trust Mike to work with their people. Results are measurable and lasting. In fact, in a one-year follow-up study, 84% of all participants were still using insights from the seminar every day. If you'd like to get control of email, contact your representative today for more information. people here took the survey just to raise a hands great 57 people completed it 81 percent of you feel that your colleagues often overuse reply to all anybody want to guess what percentage of you said I myself overutilize reply to all <laughs> what do you think 10 percent was nine percent so you're, you're right on it so we see that behavior in other people it's very clear to us but since we don't get a lot of feedback on our email on a day-to-day -day basis, we tend to think it's more a problem about somebody else versus trying to insert ourselves as part of solution. The angry email is, is probably one of the biggest destroyer of people's career ambitions. It does three things simultaneously. One, it documents your anger and it, in a, your unstable state of mind permanently. It's literally like taking a picture of yourself when you're really mad, when you're yelling at somebody. And it preserves that image of you for people to use and resolve against what they know about you. But it stays forever. Second, it motivates your recipient, right? Now they're, well, I got this, now I'm really mad too. And you've packaged it all up in this incredible information distribution system called email. And out it goes. So we must always wait 24 hours. When you feel that you're choosing your words real carefully, and you feel that maybe a little bit of emotion inside of you, my strongest uh, advice would be to wait 24 hours, sleep on it before hitting send, and never put the bullet in the gun. And that's the email address, right? Because once you put the email address on that two line, you come back the next day, you think this one is really that one, you hit send, and all of a sudden, it's out there. I think the magic of this email versus the other email is that Angela understands something that's changed in the last five or six years. And that is that people no longer read their email. They scan it. And they scan it twice. They scan it when they look at their inbox with their 200 messages. And they also scan it when they open it. And they tend to be asking one question. Am I supposed to do something with this? Do I need to get something done with this? Is this going to help me in some way? How many times do we look up? And we see that little light on, on, on the corner of our screen light up. We're like, oh, there's going to be a barbecue. And then, you know, we're reading it. And then another one comes in and it covers that one up. Oh, no, I wanted to hear about that one. And then it starts to fade away. Come back, little sign on the side of our outlet. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> we all do these crazy things. So what I want you to do is, is manage your interruptions. You'll be able to bill a lot more time. I could not have written the book without 
this tip. And that is that I went in and disconnected my ding, and I also took away that little sign that pops up. And what I got back, 20, 30, 40 more minutes in chunks of time throughout my day where I look up and yeah, things may be piling up, but I got something really great and important done. I reached a career milestone for myself, which was to write a book, which I had failed at year after year after year.